Okay, we want to move on now. Um, our next keynote speaker, that we've had a change in the program. Um, Mr. Ramon Baez is not going to be here with us. There was a family emergency with him. He's not going to be here. Um, but we do have someone who is going to jump in for him at the last moment from Hewlett Packard. And um, he's going to be talking to us about the digital world becoming increasingly pervasive and how to make your organization ready for that. So if you could please give a warm round of applause for the chief technologist at Hewlett Packard, Mr. Ulrich Pfeiffer. Thank you. All right. Thank you, folks. So as the gentleman said, I am not Ramon Bayes, but this is not a problem because I've been working very, very closely with him um, over the last years, I have to say. So Ramon was our former CIO. So he was in charge of the Yola Packard internal IT. And I will share some of the insights with you, how we use our technology also internally, because we are running a large IT organization. So, so to speak, we are drinking our own champagne. And I think that's important for you as potential customers to understand. So my name is Ulrich Pfeiffer. I'm chief technologist at HPE, Yola Packard Enterprise, as we are called now. I'm looking after the software portfolio that we have in-house, and I'm leading a group of so-called business consultants across EMEA. They translate all of the technology that I'll be talking about today into what really counts, and this is business value. Um, so I think it's the third year now that Yola Packard is again uh, at CBIT, at the show, at the conference, and I must say it has changed a lot. Um, so I see a lot of other you know, faces and companies attending the event. And it also shows that somehow the world we all live in has changed. So we are looking at new business models, at new ways of innovating things that we do as customers as well as consumers. And that is something that I'm going to be talking about in the rest of the presentation. But before I actually do so, let me quickly recap what happened towards the end of last year. So many, many of you in the room know Hewlett Packard for a long time. I mean, in Germany, we had 57 years or 58 years of a, a Jola Packard office in a small city called Böblingen, close to Stuttgart. Some of you might know this. Um, and the company was actually split into two independent as well as stock listed companies. So on the right hand side, you have uh, the Jola Packard, left hand, you have the, the Jola Packard Enterprise, and you can recognize this with the green rectangular logo. This company um, owns all of the server, networking, software, cloud and converged system technologies, as well as storage services in our cloud um, and cloud management portfolio. So this is the new Hewlett Packard Enterprise, or HPE in short. Uh, HP Inc. holds all of the consumer products, let me call it this way, notebooks, printing, um, desktops and the likes, they also invest a lot into 3D printing technology. So legally, uh, these are two separate companies. We do have a, still a very close work connection, of course, in particularly when we talk about mobility, and I'll be touching down on this later on in this presentation. Why is this good for you as a customer or for you as a partner? Because each one of these companies, which, by the way, are about the same size, it's between 56 and $60 billion in turnover, they will be focusing on their core competence. So HP Enterprise, HPE will focus on the list that you see here and be more concentrated on providing state-of-the-art technology, laser-focused for you as our clients or partners. And the same goes for HP Inc., which is more focusing on the consumer side. So some of you might ask yourself, where is the HP logo? You know, the blue round HP logo, we left it to HP Inc. because that is a consumer brand and it just made logical sense for them to carry the logo forward. HP, Yola Packard Enterprise usually deals with larger scale customers and they now, in the meantime, allow me to say, got used to the new green logo that we have. All right. So I wanted to talk a little bit about <coughs> disruptive innovation. And when you walk over the show floor, you, you see a lot of this actually um, in, in action already. Um, I would also think when I ask you, you know, who in the room is using WhatsApp as a messaging tool? Lots of people in the room. This is a disruptive 
innovation, a disruptive technology actually breaking into the territory of the telecommunications industry. I can also guarantee you that we have at least 10 different versions of WhatsApp in the room. What they do is they try some new functions and features and capabilities on a distinct group of people, and if it works with you in a country or as a certain group, they will then roll it out to a larger population. This leads to a very sort of agile development methodology at the back end. And that's what we also see. Um, many companies sort of separate their IT organizations in two major categories. One is called core IT. This is the core business that you are running. If you're a bank, if you're insurance, if you're a pharma, the credo there is, you know, keep the systems running, don't change it too often, change is bad. On the other side, you have this very new dynamic world. It's all about agility, mobile access, bring new services to life very, very quickly. So people also refer to this as fluid IT, or Gartner calls it bimodal IT. That's what we actually see happening. So um, companies are doing this. Um, companies either put new groups into place that focus on innovation, and by the way, it is not an either or. It's a combination of those things. You need to have that speedboat that is very agile to try out new things. But then when it comes to scale, you need to have the core IT that actually supports um, the functions. There are some other interesting facts. I mean, every one of you remembers the last soccer world championship. Do you? The Germans in the room, you remember? Of course you remember what happened, you know. 7-1 to one to Brazil, and then in the final, 1-0 uh, to Argentina. That was a big success. What many of you most likely don't know is that the team has put sensors into the shoes of the players during their trainings to analyze the way they play soccer, or football, as other people call it. Why is this good? They could actually use the information and analyze the playing behavior of each individual, and later on position the player in the optimal place in the game. So this is a good use of, let's say, disruptive and innovative technology that actually led to additional success. Now, you could also say that maybe the 12th player is called big data or big data analysis. So I think a good example on collecting sensor information, IoT information, analyzing it, and driving some additional value and benefits out of this. Also, my role has been changing. When, I've, when I'm invited to meet clients, they often invite me or my team members to come to do what they call a creative workshop. So it's not like the old days, and you come in and say, here's my portfolio of solutions. How much would you like to buy today or tomorrow? It's let's sit on a table and talk about innovative innovations, innovative new breakthrough business models or ideas, new digital services, whatever it may be. So it is a different relationship. It's more, like I said, a creative work relationship where HPE brings a lot of technology, experience, very skilled consultants to the table. On the other side, we speak with the business owners, and they bring in their ideas and ask ourselves, is this possible? Can you help me doing this? And that is one way um, towards the idea economy, as we call it. Now, the path to this idea economy is not only consisting of, of brand new technologies. Some or many of the technologies that we are using to enabling this idea economy is around with us for quite some time. Cloud is a given. Companies do this. Most of the cloud instantiations we see, however, are private clouds or managed private clouds. There's an, an interesting statistics <clears throat> here in Germany. We did this recently. Don't ask me who the company was doing the survey. We asked German customers, are you believing, are you willing to put some of your services into a public cloud environment? Quite some of them said yes. However, 80%, we want the data center to be in Germany somewhere. So it's kind of a trusted location. There's also some legal implications, but cloud actually does happen. The same goes for mobility. There are companies who have a mobile-first strategy. So they put new services or new products um, on a mobile platform first, rather than on the traditional PC or laptop-based 
web-based user interfaces. And this is changing. When you look at the ever-increasing app stores, the way we drive uh, um, our lives, the way we check in for flights uh, has changed dramatically. The key questions for many of them is, how do I actually get to this five-star, very positive user rating? And HPE provides technologies to make sure your customers or your application receives that five-star rating at the end of the day. Big data in the last two years pretty much was a technology discussion. You know, how much petabytes of information can you store? How fast is your database? HPE has invested a lot into technologies, um, into database technologies that have outperformed the market leaders by a factor of 1,000. So specifically designed databases that help to scale into the range of several petabytes, but also allow you to analyze the information very, very quickly. So we have been investing a lot on this. We also have invested a lot of the analyzation capabilities. Collecting data is good. What are you going to do with this? Business value comes with making something useful out of the data. So we have a number of cool technologies in place, about 180 patents on it. And this thing is clever enough to differentiate the word cold in a different context. Cold beer is good. Cold steak is bad. That's what we can recognize. And now you can stimulate your mind what you can do with this and driving um, some business benefits out of this. And then IoT, the Internet of Things, that's one of the hot themes here at CBIT as well, or Industry 4.0 as one of the instantiations here in Germany and more countries around us. Um, Industry 4.0 is a lot about connecting you know, millions or tons of sensor devices into a common, call it infrastructure, collect the information, and then again, um, analyze the data in order to drive business um, decisions or in order to increase outcomes. What we also see, we are putting more and more intelligence into the thing. If you visit the booth we have in hall number four, you see a BMW i3. And in the trunk of the BMW, you have one of the latest HPE Moonshot server technologies. It's a small server. It runs on 12 volts. So we're bringing intelligence into the thing in order to do on-site data analytics in near real time. This goes far beyond of having internet on board. This is something all of the major car makers have. This is bringing IoT intelligence onto the device, do a lot of pre-processing, and then sending it back um, into a central part of your organization. And all that is kind of wrapped by the theme of digitization. Digitization, um, I mentioned this with the mobile devices we have, the way we go shopping, the way we do uh, check-in at airlines, and so on and so forth. And if you think um, our social behavior got worse with the introduction of mobile phones, because people are usually staring at their phones. Your kids do this. Um, I've been actually looking up some pictures on the internet out of the 1920s. And you also see large groups of people. What do they do? Reading a newspaper. So just, you know, the technology has changed, not so much the way we use these things. Now, all of this for us in Yola Packard Enterprise means we group everything we do within the company along four, we call these transformation areas. They are all of the same importance, but we believe for companies who want to go onto the path of becoming a very innovative company, using more digitization, becoming part of what we call the idea economy, they need to look into those four areas. And it's, it's, it's not a difference where you start and where you end, but we think transforming your environment into something flexible, into a hybrid infrastructure is key. Protecting whatever you do. Security needs to be an integral part of anything you do or anything you offer. Empower, which is make use of the data that you have inside or that you can collect from any external sources. And then finally, enable productivity for your own workforce, for your own personnel, but more importantly, for your customers. Now, going a little bit more in, into details onto this, on the, on the transform side, there's a lot we have on offer. So everything you've been reading over the past six years on HP, now HPE Cloud, with our Helion portfolio, falls into this category. But it's not only about infrastructure and allowing you to do a mixture of private, managed private, hosted private, parts of public cloud, you name it, 
based on your business priorities. That's what we believed always. It's going to be a hybrid infrastructure. So you choose what is the best delivery model. You might have some testing capabilities in a public cloud, but most of your production will run in a, in a private or in a hosted private cloud. But this is also the area where we put in a lot of automation capabilities, software intelligence to automate processes, the delivery of applications, and of course, delivering um, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and the likes. The whole notion of managing all of this in one umbrella view is also part of this category. So no matter what technology you are using, there is one person in charge of making sure your applications run, your services are available, stable, and in quality. So that, that we have solutions in the portfolio to help you achieving that. Protect is all about <coughs> security. I mean, many people say, well, security, we know it's, it's a very important um, aspect. I'll give you two examples. The days are actually over where hackers attack companies with a very simple denial of services attack. Some still do. You know, for me, this is a little bit old style. This is old fashioned. It's like the bank robbers trying to bomb an ATM out of a banking wall. This is yesterday's technology. You just don't do this anymore. Hackers are clever. They are using cloud technologies, and they are basically attacking your environment in very small pieces. And every single piece individually is not a threat, is not dangerous. But everything combined over the course of three months, six months, a year, will create a massive security threat for you. We have technology to detect this and tell you you have been under attack although you don't even know yet. The other example is about sensors. Sensors are becoming cheap. You can buy sensors with 20 years of battery life for 50 cents. And for example, they transmit humidity information, air pressure, and they can sense the difference between this height and this height. Now let's assume I have a temperature sensor in this room and it says, whatever, hot here, 25 degrees. Just recently, we hacked into the communication between the sensor and the receiving device. You might ask, so what? We increased the temperature reading, 25, 50, 100, 500 degrees. You might still ask, so what? If we raise the temperature to 500 degrees, we will all get a shower. It's going to be a sprinkler alarm. You know, we will all get wet. In other instances, for example, you might shut down your environment, your production environment. So security is important. It needs to be built in. Empower is all about data analysis. So make sure you're capturing structured information. That's what you have in your CRM systems. That's what you have in your documents, in your Excel files and the likes. We know how to read this. More importantly, also get access to unstructured information, which is captured in video, in voice information, which is tweeted somewhere um, about the reputation of your company, for example. We can also grab this and bring this into this one perspective. So I, I gave you this example about cold beer and cold steak. Another one is um, we are doing is, is interesting. Um, whoever runs a manufacturing shop knows that picture. When, when the person in charge comes in on a Monday morning, they open the door to the factory and they just do this. You know, they listen to the voice, to the sound of the machines, and they say, this sounds fine. The machines that I'm producing the transmission parts with sounds like it should be. So with one of our clients, we do sound comparison and say, does the machine park sound as it should? And if not, we can raise an alert. And you might find three years down the road that you have a warranty problem with one of the gears that was produced by this machine. And you could actually tell by the noise it makes. So it's really cool and clever technology. Enabling, um, like I said, is a lot about, I'm one slide behind, yeah, and sorry for that. Enabling is a lot about uh, the mobile aspect. The mobile aspect for, of course, your internal, for your employees, but as well for your customers. I mentioned this mobile first strategy. Now, everything that looks very simple is typically a lot of work to be done in the back end. I mentioned this five star experience. Companies get rated by the presence of their mobile applications. I choose my airline whenever possible based on the simplicity of the web check-in or on the mobile check-in. So I always get annoyed if this one company always asks me, who are you and where do you want to go? 
I should know because I have been with your application before. So they will not get this five-star experience. In order to provide this end-user customer positive experience, you need to start from the mobile application and, and cover, manage the whole transaction until the back end in your data center. We can do this. We can clearly tell you your application runs better on an iOS device than on an Android. And we can tell you where, where customers get upset, they leave the application, or where you spend a lot of time, or that your application drains my battery like hell, so I will not use it. This goes into the really, really cool stuff. Now, speaking a little bit more internally and why this is all good for customers, so transforming to a hybrid infrastructure is important because it increases your agility. You can choose private cloud, public cloud, hosted. We host it in your data center. We host it in our data center. You use it, and so on and so forth. Any kind of that mixture is actually possible. And we've been using this also internally to reduce cost. I'll give you some HPE IT internal examples. The old days, it took us about 22 days to deploy a brand new physical server systems. We now do this in a matter of two to three hours, 22 days down to hours. It took us two weeks to deploy a complex Oracle database. We are now down to less than five minutes by automating the whole process. This is breakthrough technology. This is increasing efficiency a lot. This is saving a lot of money, needless to say. And we're also doing this for our customers. Many of you know the film of DreamWorks with the Kung Fu Panda. They actually had different versions. They had one in English, one in German, one in Mandarin. So they also came out with different versions of the same core, and we applied the technology to release this very, very quickly. Now, on Protect, I talked about security and how important that is. We run 10 security centers worldwide for our customers. One is in Germany, Böblingen. Um, we have about 5,000 5, security professionals who feed the system with intelligence so we can protect our customers better. So we have a lot of experience in how to run security operation centers. And of course, we also have security software that allows, like I mentioned before, to analyze user behavior and then tell you if suddenly People communicate to people that they have not communicated before, and they actually shouldn't do so. So many people say the notion of mobility also increases the attack surface, and that is actually true. 80% of the attacks happen on the mobile app level, not in the data center. Remember the ATM example. Empower the data-driven organization. So this is making use about the information you have in your company and turning this into new revenue streams, into new products, or into new services. Um, there is um, some good use cases. So we have been working with this company called Blah Blah Car together to help them put in uh, their new platform for their car sharing operations. And today, they have about 20 million global members that actually use this. It's another interesting piece and in disruptive technology. Yeah, it puts, um, you know, again, the taxi industry a little bit in trouble, similar to the Uber example, not in Germany, I know, but in others. But making use of the data and understand what your customers want is, is a key thing. So how do they use my product? How can I increase my services, for example? And then enable workplace productivity. I'll give you some example out of the United States. Fine, we're here in Germany. I'm German. Anyway, this is a cool example. The last Super Bowl in the US in February at the Levy Stadium in Santa Clara had about 70,000 people attending. HPE equipped the whole stadium with Wi-Fi access and um, Bluetooth beacons. So with the Bluetooth beacons, every visitor could find his or her place immediately. Through Wi-Fi, they could order food. They can, of course, send selfies. We had about 10.1 terabytes of information transmitted over a Wi-Fi link. We had 27,000 unique Wi-Fi users all in one stadium, and it worked. It performed seamlessly, no breaks, no security issues or whatsoever, uh, with a maximum of about 20,000 concurrent users. So that talks about stability and accessibility when it comes also to conferences like this. Now, this is an, an, a representation on the journey that HPE went through and is not meant for you to read. I know it's an eye chart. But it shows the journey that we ourselves have been through. 
you can see a lot of acquisitions that we have done. Back in the year 2000, Hewlett Packard merged with Compaq. I was there by the time. The day after the merge, we had access to the Compaq IT systems, could read the information that I was allowed to read, and the same vice versa. At the end of the letter, you see that we, are now, that we have separated the companies, as I said at the very beginning. And there's another credit to our IT organization. The separation went completely smooth. Yes, I had to change my email address to hpe.com now. But other than that, there was no disruption. And we are relying on IT as much as you do. There was no disruption in email. There was no disruption in internal communication and so on and so forth. So we've done both. We have acquired lots of companies also in the software space. And we, knew, we know what it takes to integrate technology and people. If you ask me today what is more difficult, technology or people, I lean towards the people answer. This is about the change mentality we have. So we are happy to share this with you. So, and as I said, we are drinking our own champagne, we are using our own technologies internally, and if you are about to acquire companies or do any significant changes in your IT organization, we are more than happy to share our experiences. So I'm using the remaining four and a half minutes or so I have to talk a little bit about IoT and why we believe this is so important. Now, everything I said is part of our IoT strategy, and IoT is something that HPE drives across the board. So we have lined up all of our capabilities and technologies, hardware, software, services, and structured this around the Internet of Things. Connectivity is key. Remember the Super Bowl example. We know how to do this. The compute power is a no-brainer. We are building the most powerful systems you can buy on this planet, and we put it into cars and run it on 12 volts. Data analysis, cold beer, cold steak, noise in the factory. Security is an integral part. I have not seen a decoupled security project in my professional life. It is security for cloud. It is security for mobility. It is security for IoT. So we bake this in from the very beginning. Ecosystem is important. We know that there are a lot of partners around that we should work together in order to help solve customer challenges and customer problems. And we have always been open to this, so it's a clear um, strategy from HPE to closely work with partners and wrap all of the offerings with services. I talked about this creative workshops, which is the first step on the journey to a digital enterprise or to an idea economy. And everything from there, implementation, consulting services, etc., etc is also part of the offerings that we have. Now, coming to CBIT, we are, we are showcasing a lot of cool stuff. The BMW I talked about. The other two cool things you can see is the Avatar and Wind Park. So the Avatar, I have a problem. You know, I hate shopping. Man in the room, I hate shopping. So how do I escape this? My wife brings suits at home. And I can tell you, with my size, one out of four fits. So the rest, she carries them back. If I buy this online, even worse, even worse, you know, things will just not fit me. The avatar takes a 3D model of my body shape, and all I need to make sure I stay in shape, and I can try this cloth on. This will revolutionize the fashion industry. So I can check, does this actually fit my body size? And the best thing of all is I can invite my wife remotely to make sure the tie fits to, what, to the suit that I selected. <laughs> You're laughing. I have problems with this, so if I'm misdressed, call my wife. Anyway, what I'm saying is it's a cool example on how we use technology to increase revenues and reduce the return rates of online clothing. Wind Park is close to my heart because I've been running this project for two years. It's an IoT example. And the wind turbine is just a big thing. It's full of sensors. It's terribly expensive. People who run operate a park today, have tons of different turbines in their park. What we do is we're connecting to all of, the, all of the different turbines. We take into consideration the IT environment. This is ever growing. We build in security, and we bring this into one management interface. And this is built on technology that we have been successfully using for 25 years in the IT industry. So it's robust, it scales, and it works. It's, another, it's an IoT example. If it works with turbines, it works with elevators, or anything else you can think of, please visit my colleagues at the show floor. You can't miss it. It's turbines turning 
in hole number four. With this, I'm actually coming to the end. So thanks again for spending your valuable time here with me and my colleagues. I'm around, we're in hall four. Um, we have another keynote here on Thursday where we talk about the latest evolution and innovation in our infrastructure, in our converged infrastructure. Paul Miller will be here um, on, the same, on the same stage talking about the composable infrastructure that we just launched reason, uh, recently that allows you to combine CPU and story storage in a very, very dynamic and individual fashion. We have about 18, 18 seconds for questions. <laughs> I was expecting this. That's why I thought I used the whole time. Thank you for being here and spending time with us. Thank you very much. And thank you for jumping in, too. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Thank you.